is just a series of border crossings. And teachers are guides who lead us across borders. We face so many borders in everyday life. Just think about all the borders you face, some of them invisible. We have to cross borders, but sometimes we have to cross back and forth, sometimes daily. I know I cross multiple borders in my religious, other racial, some cultural. But borders are really just obstacles to overcome. We're not meant to block them or hide behind them. We're meant to welcome people across. And when we cross, there's a mindset change. We're just a few miles away from an international border crossing. But before I talk about this one, I'd like to introduce you to a border crossing a bit closer. Here in San Diego, at the corner of El Cajon and Fairmont, sits the Jojo Cafe. Founders Tayari and Carlos have created this community watering hole, where people are free to join together across multiple generations, and where youth with barriers to employment are free to enter in at 3 p.m. through the colorful fence and explore their different futures and their dreams in an emotionally safe environment. I was drawn to the Dojo Cafe because it's a sort of portal between the sometimes grim realities that people here face in their everyday life, on the home and at school, and the safe place that's created. Carlos and Dari have created a border crossing. They help the students that they work with and all the patrons that come to the cafe cross from a world of no, you can't, to a world of yes, you can. And they're good at this because they started doing it themselves. Let's take Carlos. Long before he was a guide, he didn't know why he started ditching and started to kind of turn it into a sort of game. He got bees so that people would get off his back. Did the same in college and in grad school. Then he got a job in social work and realized that people expected him to know things, even things about history and about math. But he didn't know how to cross. The way that Carlos puts it, the students that he works with, their brain is crunching all the time. If they knew how to cross, they would be able to go to any employer and say, hire me. I've been turning problems into solutions my whole life. Did you hear that? These youth we sometimes call at risk actually have a competitive advantage. See, the ancient philosophers and teachers like Socrates and Aristotle, they taught through probing and questioning. Their students move from a world of taking the given world for granted to a world of asking questions and creating. And this ancient method, it finds its renewal in experience-based learning, or the Socratic method, which makes sense. Because we see the world differently when we look at it from a new perspective. For me, my perspective came, my perspective change came when I was here in San Diego in college. I knew I was only a few minutes from one of the busiest border crossings in the world and the biggest in the Western Hemisphere, and I couldn't stay away. I know we've heard a lot recently about our southern border, and I'll assure you that in college, I was crossing almost weekly, finding new reasons to take friends across, making new friends, and finding excuses to go to roller skate or, to movies or simply eat tacos. Over college, these four years of college, I crossed the border about 100 times, which means I spent about 800 hours in Tijuana and about 200 hours in the border wait to cross back. You see, it's a little bit longer to cross south back north. And what I realized at the time, that at the beginning, this time was fun. I didn't really mind staying in line because there was so much to talk about, so much to see, so much to explore. Over time, it certainly became inconvenient, just like any of us who have to get accustomed to standing in a long line often standing between me and plans back in San Diego, making me late for birthday parties and final exams. But what I realized is that I was learning more in this 
single moment, this pause between one set of cultures and another, one set of languages and another, one context and another, than any other single experience. This border weight, this pause, had become my greatest teacher. I was being educated in the in-between. And what's more, I joined the ranks of the over 100,000 people that cross our border every day, commuting to different parts of their lives, to work, to play golf. I joined the ranks of over 100,000 people who are borderlanders, people who live in the both and. So it's perhaps natural that when I started working in higher education, I knew my role was to help students be over increasingly comfortable in their own in-between. My work at University of San Diego is with student social entrepreneurs. And I see the work in social innovation as a tool for various ends, not all of them resulting in a social startup. In essence, I teach students to cross. They're socialized in a world where joining an existing organization is normal. And we invite them to consider building something. They're socialized in a world where we take the problems that we face for granted. We invite them to a reality of creating a new future. And of course, we help them cross many borders in their life. My colleague Austin has his students plan their different movements for social change in an Excel spreadsheet. He has them plot their social movement or social innovation in rows and columns, timelines and dollar signs. He doesn't ask them to move from a world of creation and imagination to a world of reality. He asks them to inhabit both. So may your teaching be the everyday magic of crossing borders. May your learning be taking others with you next time, looking who might come with you. Be a border crosser. Be a guide who can navigate different cultures and languages with grace and skill inviting others to do the same. Because once you start seeing borders, you can't stop seeing borders. And once you start crossing them, you can't stop. Thank you.